Right, you're looking live on the Senate floor where Ted Cruz is still at it and actually just warming up more than an hour, almost an hour and a half into a filibuster like talkathon that could drag very late into the night and beyond. Now, should he stumble, this guy's ready to take his place and continue to rumble. Utah Senator Mike Lee. Senator, very good to have you. Um, is this technically a filibuster uh, because you don't have something before you on the floor? What is it? Well, technically, at about noon tomorrow, we are time limited by an agreement to go to a vote. Uh, but, you know, it, it's hard to convince anyone that this isn't a form of filibuster nonetheless. Uh, he's got the opportunity to speak possibly 20, 21, 22 hours, something like that. Wow. Uh, I don't doubt his capacity or his resolve to do it. Now, so, so, in other words, I'm sorry, sir, I just want to be clear. And you guys have a bunch of rules that I don't understand. But that means he can't take a potty break, can't go to the bathroom. Or can he? I mean, do the same rules exist for a typical filibuster than the, as they do here? Yeah, yes. He, he, okay. he cannot go to the bathroom. He can't sit down. Uh, and so he's got to stay right there where he is. And that takes a, a lot of strength, a lot of resolve and determination. He definitely has that. And he, he's doing this. Uh, for the same reasons that a lot of us are involved in this effort, because we care deeply about the American people, what they're experiencing, what they're facing in connection with this law. And we want very much to make sure that the voice of the American people is heard here in Washington and that the people are represented well. The people don't want this law because they know it will make their family's health care situation worse. Um, Senator, we're hearing reports, and we, we couldn't get confirmation on but they're consistent and widespread enough that we're, we're comfortable in saying that there were efforts made by party leadership, that is, Republican Party leadership, in the Senate to squelch this moment that Senator Cruz uh, is, is using and, and potentially you. Um, now, we've contacted Mitch McConnell's office a number of times. They, they don't get back to us. I, I don't think it's me. I just think that they're busy. But... Um, do you know if that is the case, whether they have, the leadership has encouraged other Republicans stay away from these guys, their kryptonite? Well, look, you will have to ask Senator McConnell about what Senator McConnell wants to say about this issue. There's been no secret that there has been some disagreement among Republicans in the Senate about how best to deal with this, this issue. And I speak for myself. I speak for the constituents that I represent. And I speak for what I believe is the right thing to do, which is to do everything we possibly can to stand behind the House of Representatives, uh, who has in turn uh, stood with the American people in saying, we want to keep government funded. We want to fund government, but we want to defund Obamacare in the process. You're, no one is denying your passion, Senator. You know, it always gets back to a game of numbers. John McCain and others have referred to that math thing. It's prohibitive in the Senate that even if you were to change some minds and win in the Senate, the president will certainly veto it. And there's more than enough protection for him to prevent an override. So you're fighting a losing battle. You say what? Well, to those people who are saying that, who are predicting that, I, I say that there have been a lot of causes that we as Americans have fought and eventually won, even though the odds were stacked against us. Even when at times we've had to fight uh, when we were in the minority or in the minority within the minority. That doesn't mean that we don't make the voice of the American people heard when they're crying out for relief, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Uh, the only thing we know for certain, uh, Neil, is that if we don't try, nothing will happen. We have no guarantees uh, uh, that this will work, but we do have a guarantee uh, that it won't work if we don't try. But we have a guarantee that this law will take effect January 1st. If people here in Congress refuse to listen to their constituents and allow this law to go into effect as scheduled, even though the president has said he's not going to follow it, even though the president himself has acknowledged that the law is not ready for prime time. I just take it just real quickly that Mitch McConnell has not talked to you about this. Uh, again, look, private conversations that we have among and between members uh, generally re remain private. But I, I will say that publicly, we have had conversations about this and there have been disagreements within the Republican conference about how best to proceed. Okay. I believe that what we need to focus on is the fact that we can't be complicit in making it easier for Harry Reid to insert one amendment just one single amendment, allowing only that amendment to come up in connection with this House passed continuing resolution. One amendment that would gut the House continuing resolution, stripping out the uh, defunding language from the House resolution, while allowing no other amendments to be brought. I mean, look, if he wants to bring this up for an up or down vote so that we can vote on the House continuing resolution as is, fine. 
or if he wants an open amendment process where uh, different members can bring forward amendments, Republicans and Democrats, that's fine too. All right. But Harry Reid can't have his cake and eat it too. And our effort is an effort to block that, an effort to not make it so easy for Harry Reid to gut the House continuing resolution. Senator Mike Lee, we're watching. Thank you very much. Thank you. Meanwhile, we're